add, I didn't get to play too much of the weekly this week because it's a very interesting weekly. Some people like it, some people hate it. Um, but it, the, the, what I'm saying about it is, and I mean this in not in like um, a backhanded compliment sort of way. I think it's a very fun weekly that is super different than the average weekly. I wish I got to play more. It'll be a super auto sausage. Unfortunately, my kids' daycare had to have a medical emergency. Very selfish of them, which meant that my uh, child has been home from daycare for four days this week. They only went on Monday and then a half day on Tuesday. So as a result, we now are... Uh, we, we didn't get a chance to record too much Super Auto Pets this week, but that's life. That's just how she goes. Three squirrels? I don't really want to buy a blueberry. Honestly, I, I would. We could go Super Strawberry build, I guess. <clears throat> what do you pay your daycare for? They're very inconsistent. Yeah, but they got you like bent over a barrel, pretty much. You know, the, the thing that you love most in the world is in their care eight to nine hours a day. What are you going to do? Antagonize your, your daycare uh, provider? Yes? I know you don't have kids. You can't do this. You can't be like, I'm never having kids. And then when I ask when, a hypothetical question about having kids, you're like, here's what I would do. You wouldn't do anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've made that clear to me on many occasions. What are they going to do? Hit your kid? I'm not suggesting they would hit your child. Like they're... It's just a medical situation. It wasn't like, uh, you know, they just decided to go to Cancun for a week or something like that. But all I'm saying is, you know, if, if you start to antagonize the daycare when it comes time for snack time and, you know, there's only six apples to go around and somebody's got to eat a Bartlett pear, maybe all of a sudden your kid finds himself eating the Bartlett pear instead. I was stowed on this one. Just don't need you. Just don't need you. Pears are better. I've I've been a a pear defendor for so long. Ever since we had our kid, I've been eating like way more fruits. I'm willing to admit that I was simply wrong. Pears are just not that good. And I really went to bat for them for two decades. My parents used to throw them in my lunch. I would take them to school. Some pears are the perfect softness. They're, they're like just, they're one quanta of solace away from mushy. You eat a pear and you're like, it will be mushy in six hours. That's the perfect time to have a pear. Sometimes you get a pear, you bite into it and it like makes your soft palate bleed. Like you bite into it and it like perfectly forms like a mold of your upper teeth that you could give to the dentist to like, build a retainer for you. Sometimes it's like biting into a piece of bark. They have a, the pear is too inconsistent. I like the flavor of a pear. I'm not willing to deal with the inconsistency of the pear. I would, if I'm going to eat a pear, I'd rather just eat an apple. And I'm not even that apple pilled or pen pineapple apple pilled. But I, I, an apple's flavor might be a little bit worse, but apples are so much more consistent. And moreover, you know when an apple's going to suck ass because you grab it and you squeeze it and you're like, this shit is like mashed potatoes on the inside. It's going to be horrible. That's just the way it goes. You grab a pear, you don't know until you take the first bite. I don't want you. You know what? I want you. Watch this. Buy me a strawberry, sell me, buy me, buy me, buy me. And all of a sudden, we got a, we got a sniper team. All of a sudden, we got a sniper team. I should keep the strawberry, actually. Watch this. Ooh. You snipe me? Try to snipe me? I'd rather snipe you. We're gonna lose this one anyway. <laughs> so be it. I 
I've been eating a lot of berries because my kid eats a lot of berries. Berries are definitely great, man. Not a food for the faint of heart as a result of their prodigious price tag. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. After, after everything we've been through. Pure sugar? Brother is fruit. You know what you sound like whenever you say like strawberries have too much sugar? You see that subreddit that's called like, um, I didn't have eggs. And it's all people leaving one star reviews of recipes where they didn't actually cook the recipe. They made a substitution in the recipe and then it sucked. And then they gave the review as if they made it verbatim. Like the, the one that went viral was like for carrot cake. And then it said, yuck, carrots have too much sugar. I used a cup of shredded kale instead. But my cake came out like not sweet and gummy. And you're like, yeah, that's why you use carrots, man. You see, or the one that was like, it was a recipe for mold wine. And they were like, this wine was too sour. Yuck, it tasted like vinegar. And then the reply from the original author was like, just so you know, you're supposed to use apple cider, as it says in the recipe, not apple cider vinegar. They, they use like two cups of vinegar plus a bottle of wine. Like, it's just, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> or the one that... Uh, it was like, you're supposed to use a teaspoon of chili paste. And then the lady gave it a one-star review and said it was too spicy. Her husband was crying when he was eating it. It turns out she used two and a half cups. Two and a, a, a teaspoon is 15 milliliters. Two and a half cups is 625 milliliters. It's like 50 times the dose. My God, she was trying to kill him. It's, it seems, and these people vote. That's the scary thing or something. I don't know. Tree frog emu can be an interesting endeavor. We can talk about it. Hang on. Why don't you take a strawberry for now too? I think that, I think that the puffin can get us out of this. Or the one that gave it a one-star review for a recipe and said, just so you know, this recipe isn't very friendly to people who have, like, they have to have low oxalate diets. And then the author was like, this isn't a low oxalate recipe. It's just, people are going, they're losing their damn minds out there, man. Give me, give me some of this. We're looking for a tree frog. I'm on two life. I'm not going to get where I need to go on this run. This weekly was made for hedgehogs, you're not even using them. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm all like, I'm, I'm antiquated. I'm, I'm still running on like Monday uh, strategies for a Friday weekly. So like, I'm, I'm definitely a little scared. Come on, give me a stoat. Thank you so much, you gave me a stoat. You didn't give me what I want on level up. Sell the stoat, see what you get out of that. Hamster gives you one gold per roll. Okay, roll me. Roll me. I w I'm going to have to say, at this point, sell me. Buy a crocodile instead. I'm going to say sell me. And I'm going to put a... You got two triggers left. I'm going to put a, a snake out here. I know this makes our puffin worse, but to be honest, our puffin wasn't getting us there to begin with. You're going to probably attack. You're going to move up one. You're going to get a couple triggers. You could also get sold. No, I don't have enough gold to reroll. Okay, that, I should have used it earlier. Get your sloth yet? Um, I didn't really play much of this weekly, honestly. Just, just due to circumstances in my life. Ho! Oh! Five wins. Respectable. I would roll. That's a roll in my world. Still a role in my world. For now, like, because we were kind of stuck with the lad for a minute. Oh my god, the double, the double croc sniper. It's like, you, you have to get a lioness, and at the same time, I can't afford a lioness. Mm. 
You snipe me, I snipe you. You move up to the front, you snipe me, I snipe you, and we're still winning. One one hamster kind of goes hard. Well, it's just like, because of the emu, it doesn't really matter what our snake is behind. I would say freeze me, roll me. Freeze me, roll me. Might as well, just, just buy him early. See what you get, nothing, nothing of value. Roll me, you got one trigger left, roll me. Sell me, buy me, sell me, place me, buff me. If the lioness is going to get us there, that, it, it actually had to be that. So I appreciate what you've done for me. But we really, we got to amp it up real quick. <laughs> I don't think we're getting there, but... Four snipers on their squad? I'm completely dead and they lived with one HP. The world is so fucked. <laughs> so... <laughs> Motherfucker. Sure, 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 sure. Sell me. I don't like these animals. Roll me. It's almost like even worse if they have a mosquito. Mm, I'll be like a folded sock. Imagine going over to somebody's house, opening up their, like, dresser, and realizing they're a sock folder instead of a sock roller. That'd be weird. You'd be like, what are they doing? Who does either? I'm a sock roller. I mean, rolling the, roll the socks just feels right. I put him inside the other sock. That's what I mean. That's like that you that you're a roller. We're not so different, you and I. Baller, roller, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, you know, a rose by any other name would sound as sweet. Weasel goes crazy here. I feel like I'm stupid, but I can't refuse the stoat. Because the potential payout of the stoat is so funny. If you can get a level 2 or level 3 stoat, sell it when you get tier 6s, and then it spits out a lioness, you're golden. But what it always does is it spits out like a fucking 1-1, one, one, I don't even know, just 1-1 one, one oyster or something like that, and you're like, what am I doing? I'm going to do this. Two cost, one one buff, stoat me. And I, the pig doesn't have to live anymore. Oyster wouldn't be too bad. It's really bad for econ. Because your ass spent like 30 gold getting the stoat to level 3. Okay, you got me. So then you sell your level 3 stoat and you get 10 coins back from the oyster and then you got an empty space on your squad where your level 3 used to be. It gives you gold when you need it. I don't want gold, though. I want stats. Ten coins later is better. You guys are crazy. You've lost your damn mind. If you want to give me $21 right now, and then in ten rounds, I'll give you $10 and pay it back, I'll take that loan any day of the week. Isn't there like 8% inflation in SAP? Like the gold isn't worth as much as it used to be? That isn't how it works. This is a video game. Maybe for you. You princes of Maine. You kings of New England. Not for me. This is my life. Hey, Shog Noble, thanks for the 2100 bits. We really appreciate it. <laughs> how do I, I... Did you have wealth, simple cash? It's kind of hard to, as a Canadian, it's harder than it should be to, uh, harder than it should be to give money back to Americans. If you're, if you're two Canadians, it's no problem. Interact e-transfer, wealth, simple cash, $5 bill with a hockey pond on it. If you have to give money to an American, it's really hard because, I mean, you could use PayPal, but I'm like, it's just a pain in the butt, man. 
go into PayPal, make sure you type in their email address 100% perfectly. Then it's like, are you buying something or paying for goods and services? And you're like, I don't know. I don't want them to get like audited by the IRS for like this $40 repayment or whatever. But I like, I also don't want to pay two pal 2% just to send it. Like PayPal's literally not doing anything in the process. Here's a solution. Your solution is ass. Well, you know what my actual solution is, is that I don't find myself in debt to Americans. That's my solution. I, I don't think the crow is the ticket this week. You got to go, though. You're, you're obviously horrendous. PayPal in San Francisco is basically like a never-ending frat party where everybody earns $500,000 salaries because their business is just free money. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, I get that it's also just kind of like the bank. That's why I was so offended when there was that banking crisis earlier this year. I was like, how could you be out of business? You're the bank. I get, oh, you don't understand that now is duration risk. They got a lot of liquidity when rates were super low. And of course, as you, when you have cash, you, the cash wants to generate a yield so they put it into like treasuries that were yielding 25 basis points and then when the environment changed and the liquidity got pulled out yeah yeah but you don't but you but you don't do anything you don't people give you money for nothing all you have to do is manage your duration risk that's it man and you you screwed that up you're the place where people give their money for free And you couldn't even handle that? Don't get into the streaming business. It's too tough for you. It's the second easiest business on the planet. Next to banking. This is the ticket right here. You're good enough as far as I'm concerned to keep us alive for a minute. Nah. You know what? Could be fun. You forgot about FinDom? Well, I think that that's reasonably... Well, and let's not say reasonably tough necessarily, but I think it's tougher than streaming or banking. Because they could be giving their money to anyone. There's plenty of people out there in the FinDom industry, I'm sure. You know, you got lots of competition. In Canada, there's five banks. It, it, I mean, the, Canada didn't have a banking crisis this year, so maybe that's <laughs> maybe it's because there's an oligopoly. Nah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I go to five or six banks when you could stop at just one. That's true. I mean, you could stop at just one. Unlike Lay's potato chips. TD Bank goes hard. Wow, tell me you're a TD stand without telling me you're... Well, I guess you told me you were a TD stand by telling me you were a TD stand now that I think about it. I don't... They all suck. I went with... I, my progression in life, I banked with whoever my parents banked with as a kid. Then when I went to university, I looked up who had the ATMs on campus and I switched my savings account to that bank. So when I took money out of the ATM, I didn't get charged $3 for having a different bank every single time. Then when I got out of university, I went back to the bank my parents were with and I've been with them ever since. Even though at some point my parents swapped banks. They were like, just so you know, we're swapping banks because we're not happy with our service. And I was like, all right. I am happy with my service, but you do you. Which one? I'm not telling you that shit. It's privileged information. You absolutely have to do this because it's funny. And then, no, 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 I have to wait on you for a second. Okay, so sell me. You generate some cash for me. And now, why are you NBA pilled now? Listen, don't even start with me, okay? 
Did you see the post that was like, which of these teams of first, ra uh, first overall draft picks would win? 90s, 2000s, 2010s? Listen, let's start with the obvious. 2010s has no shot, okay? A lot of the players that were drafted first overall in the 2010s, they just haven't panned out. They haven't had enough time to pan out yet. You know, Zion Williamson's only in like year three and he's preoccupied. Everybody's saying 90s? You guys are crazy. Yeah, I know they got Shaquille O'Neal. I know they got Allen Iverson. But the rest of the squad, except maybe Tim Duncan, they're washed, man. They're washed. 2000s win. LeBron James. Yao Ming. Who else was it? Dwight Howard. Those are three pretty tall dudes. How are you supposed to beat those, those tall dudes? D. Rose, exactly. And I'm thinking it's D. Rose in his prime, probably. Not D. Rose, like, you know, now. No disrespect intended. Terrible take. I'm telling you, here's the thing. They play them out. I'm thinking that 2010s win zero games. If they play 10 games, 2000s take seven, 90s take three. Probably because 2000s would win the first six. They'd probably take the rest of the series off. What about Andrea Bargnani? <laughs> what about Andrea Bargnani? Toronto Raptors first overall. Toronto Raptors legend Andrea Bargnani. Edmonton Oilers legend Niall Yakupov. Okay, my whole squad is dead. That's not that unsurprising, honestly. Now, here's where things pop off. First off, the sell of the century. Oh! Okay. Oh! That's what you want. And then, try not to die. Which probably involves tigers and crocodiles. is my expe oh, oh, my expectation. <laughs> okay. Who would you take overall? First overall, Taylor Hall or Nail Yakupov? Well, I mean, like, here's the thing. If I was making the choice at the 2012 draft, it's not, they weren't in the same draft, but anyway. If I was making the choice, I'm not, I'm, obviously I'm going to get Yakupov. He was the consensus number one. But if you're pitting Hall and Yakupov, against one another. Come on, man. What is Yakupov has like 100 games played in his entire career? Taylor Hall's been bounced around, but he's a, a one-time Hart Trophy winner. He's played for like, you know, 12 years or something like that. He's been kicked out of every bar in Kingston, Ontario. It's, it's the easiest choice of my life. I think I have to... I, I think I have to sell... This is crazy, but buy... I needed the parrot. Give me the parrot. Sell the anglerfish. Run the parrot here. I'm like, sell the lioness. No, 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 no. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. A steak might come in handy here. And for now, give me this, but we want you next time. We need to not die on this round. And then the freaking lionesses are going to go crazy. When are you using the Lansford, North Dakota? Brother, you don't want to get me started on this. because <laughs> you, you, you know that I did see the conversation. Oh, get old. So what was the conversation? There is a class of people out there that for whatever reason are real estate. I don't want to say bubble deniers because I don't want to use the B word. They're, they deny the idea that real estate is more expensive relatively now than it was 30 years ago for whatever reason because it doesn't serve them well okay regardless this was someone who said here's a house you can buy for 100 and, or for fifteen thousand dollars in lansford north dakota sure it needs a little bit of fixing up but literally like they're like the average job in lansford north dakota pays like forty thousand dollars a year so after tax you could pay it off in one year all of the replies were like, I don't want to live in Lansford, North Dakota, though. 
It's 45 minutes away from a town whose downtown has one coffee shop and a community center. Then they would reply, the original poster would always reply, hey, there's nothing wrong with living in a small town. Their words, not mine. Once you get out of your get, let's get crunk phase, it can be nice to have land and settle down. Sure, that's true. Then people said, I, I mean, I shouldn't say it's true. I should say I agree with that to some extent, but I think they're making, they're, they're not responding to the argument in question, which is basically that like, you know, some houses cost less because they the house sucks and the place that they are is not desirable otherwise the price would go up because of supply and demand also they were like we don't want to live with you in lansford north dakota and this guy was like oh i don't live in lansford north dakota then why is your ass proselytizing lansford north dakota like literally you're saying it's not even good enough for me to live there it's like population 934 or something like that. That dude didn't even live there, but he was like, hey, quit complaining about the fact that in any population center with over like 100,000 people in the United States, houses cost like 40 times the annual salary pre-tax. You could just go live in Lansford, North Dakota instead, like me, except I don't even live there. Doesn't, doesn't make any damn... 200 people is not even 900 people? Your ass got to connect to the internet via Starlink? Like... I, I don't know why people, like... I guess I, it's because... It feels good online when people agree with you. I, I was gonna say, like, I don't understand why people online will just make, like, unforced errors like that. Oh my god, their squad is just mine but better. Did you see where he said that... Homeschooling is the way to go and doctors were overrated. Listen, I didn't see that. I think that there was kind of like a, an inference there that that was what was happening. But now listen, this is the tricky part because at some point it's like you got to go. But I think we win this round. I think we win this. I'm betting on us. How did he get from the NBA to this? Somebody asked. That's how I got there. Listen, it's, it's not false to say that you can, as you get older, what you desire out of a residence changes. Your idea of a, a good neighborhood might be more based on things like, are the schools here good? Is there a good grocery store nearby? Is this walkable? It might be less like, I don't know. I was going to say, like, what's the nightlife like? But that's even, like, kind of insulting because I'm sure there's lots of young people out there who are like, I don't base where I live on the nightlife. I base where I live on, you know, what's the nicest neighborhood that my ass can afford? It's fair to say, though, that your priorities change as you get older. At the same time, if Lansford, North Dakota was a nice place to live, more than 200 people would live there. It's, it's supply and demand, brother. You gotta go. Your ass doesn't have to go yet. But at some point, you gotta go. Can I do that? I think I can do that. I'm not insulting North Dakota. The pictures that they showed of North Dakota were beautiful. But I'm just saying you didn't show a $15,000 house in like another city in North Dakota that I could definitely name. He was talking about Lansford, okay? I can't combine. I can't, I can't combine them. I can't combine them. Listen, we're already so close to chilling out max and relaxing all cool. You actually have to go, and you're not even being replaced with the lioness. You're being replaced with something that's actually useful. I just don't like when people are like... 
There's no such thing as like real estate being too expensive. You just have to want it more. And then they go to like Zillow and sort low to high. And then they're like, check out this crack house in a place where nobody lives. There's a reason why. <laughs> sure, I get the idea that like, it's annoying to hear that like houses are expensive and you're like, where are you looking? And you're like downtown Manhattan, but like that's where people want to live. And they're just complaining. Like you, you don't have to, you don't have to make it like part of your identity. Let me think about this. You guys all stink. I hate you. You're a stud. And I hope people tell you that every day. Not interested. Not interested. Technically sure it's one gold. I don't I don't I don't give two shakes of a lamb's tail. You should stay closer to the front cuz you're a stud. And just take a stake just in case. I doubt it'll, rele it'll be relevant, but... Like, my thing is always, like, if you live in Lansford, North Dakota, or a town like it, and living in Lansford, North Dakota is, like, so fulfilling, then you shouldn't be online arguing with people that are trying to buy a house in San Francisco because that happens to be where their job is. You should be out enjoying the acreage that you bought or something like that, not posting like, life here is so good, I'm saving so much money, um, you are a fool and an idiot, because why are you, they're out eating tuna tataki tacos, and you know, having a fun time, your ass is arguing online. It's a bad, if you really love the place where you live, it's a bad advertisement for it, because your ass isn't doing anything except getting rankled online. Although, maybe it's if you don't want people to move there, then it's good to make people that live there seem insufferable. But if you want the value of your house to increase, you should be out there going like, everybody move to Lansford. We just got the cafe service food now. People will be like, holy shit, I gotta go to Lansford, man. The, the coffee shop sells sandwiches. This is why you were shit-talking Sook to fucking A&W ass having Sook audacity to say there's two distinct municipalities, Sook and East Sook. Sook has 21,000 people. East Sook has four people. That's seceded for some reason. We like Coffee Way more than we like Tim Hortons. Okay, make your own fucking <laughs> principality. See if I care. <laughs> I'm thinking. Nah. Well, nah. You're not sniping my units. They're too strong for you, traveler. Nah. It's not, I'm not even interested. I'm not even inter it, this is how messed up it is. I'm not even interested in you. I want another crocodile. I would run you. I would, yeah, 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 yeah. I would run you. Yeah, for sure. But I gotta, listen, we need another crocodile in order to make this work, though. So you're gonna buy me, sell me. You're going to place me. You're a 4646. It's good in and of itself. Your placement is fine. I needed another crocodile. You've screwed me. <clears throat> I'm taking a big risk here, Fokker. No crocodile. Okay. This seems scary, but completely fine. I guess that means not scary, now that I think about it. NL doesn't see stats. He's just match three pilled in his burned out brain. I'm winning, motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> you didn't replace your 2523 tiger that doubles the efficacy of your crocodile with a 4450 sauropod that doesn't fucking do anything. Relax, Poindexter. Everything's fine. You got nothing to worry about. Some of this. Roll me. See, now I actually... I'm pissed off because now I think you're in the right. Now I think you actually do sell the tiger and you just throw a level one crocodile back here, but... 
You probably move that back one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We probably don't draw, but just in case. Why not combine? Simple economics. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. My brain's a little fried. Hey! <laughs> Ten wins. Who cares? Streamers rule. Chat drools. Thanks for the freebie. That was all thanks to the stoat. Oh, yes. How about a precious package? I'm the stoat goat. So true. Kim Petrus. You see Obama post his summertime uh, playlist? And then one of the members of Boy Genius called him a war criminal? <laughs> yes, I did see that. I was just checking. I'm a millennial. I thought it was cool at first when Obama posted his reading list and his, his summer jams. Because you're like, he's just like us. But now I'm like, there is a part of me, and I think everybody agrees, which is like, why? Who cares? <laughs> like, I just don't understand. It, why do I need to know that this year, uh, he, Obama's been bumping Celebration by Cool and the Gang? It's completely irrelevant. Bro, you were the president. Can you tweet something like of merit? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> why do I need to know anyone's opinion? Well, I just, I'd like to think that people would put my ass on blast if I paid someone to build like a fucking graphic that's like, here's my summer jam and it had like a pastel kaleidoscope thing behind it. And I, like, I think you would be like, why are you taking yourself so fucking seriously? Or why, maybe why not take yourself a little bit more seriously? You used to be the, the leader of the free world and now you're like, check it out. I'm listening to BB Adubi or something like that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, why, why are you posting it? Who cares either way? Oh, we're just having fun. Our CEO shared his summer playlist with the company today. It had eight songs on it. That's so good. I can't imagine for what purpose, but... <laughs> this is going to seem like a crazy move, but this ladybug's not long for this world either. All chain smokers. No, they're all, uh, I am rectangular, I feel no hole. Michael Scott vibes. Well, I honestly feel like, yes, the CEO sharing his summer playlist is, is Michael Scott vibes. But I also feel like Obama sharing his summer playlist is Michael Scott vibes. Like, can you imagine what kind of, and I, I was going to use harsher language, but can you imagine bumping some tracks at home and then your spouse is like what's this and then you're like oh this is obama barack obama's 2023 summer jam playlist like what kind of person is like i gotta go home and build like a spotify playlist immediately and bump this shit in the kitchen like it's <laughs> why are you listening to uh car wash a song that came out 44 years ago Oh, um, <laughs> Barack Obama just rizzed up Car Wash on his Summer Jams playlist. So, honestly, I think I'm getting in, I'm getting in pretty early here. It's just weird, man. Oh, you think he's getting paid by Spotify? All right, I love that for him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell you and buff Sea Urchin. I'm on a Sea Urchin diet. I see Urchin, I buy it. I'm gonna honestly I'm gonna sell I'm gonna sell everything on the squad right now. Yeah, 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 you're all gone. Certainly don't really care about another hummingbird. Getting a lot of plus twos. Getting a scary amount of plus twos here. I would pass on all of these. I don't think they're any good, quite frankly. What's your Peloton jams for this year? Um if I was gonna make a summer jam playlist. Here's, here's the Summer Jam playlist right now, okay? Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover by Sophie B. Hawkins. 
just like he- just like heaven by the cure. Folks, let me be clear. I'll respect you if, if the police is on it. See, the, Mouth can verify this, by the way. Um, Frick the Police is not on my Summer Jam playlist, but I did have an NWA poster in my room in my third and fourth year of um, university. Because I was bumping straight out of Compton pretty much like every day. And skipping like seven of the tracks, but not the good ones. That's so funny. Why is it funny that I like good music? Why would you be surprised that I, that I listen to NWA? Because you're bald and pale? Harassed and racist? I'm going to call a drone strike Sorry, I'm still in, I'm just doing my Obama impression still. <laughs> I forgot. It. Hey, hey, we'll go. We're, okay, uh, folks, I'm leaving now. All right, okay. Here we are. I'm back. What did I miss? You know what? Sell me. Hello, mouth, by the way. Hello. I think we want something like this. This little ditty. Hmm. Sure, for now. And then I need an emu on level up, please. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse, quite frankly. And yet we're still gonna win. And yet we're still going to lose. <laughs> no, we're still gonna do it all. We're still gonna lose. <laughs> Your ass is horrendous. You suck. You stink. Okay, how about a, a, a level up here? I don't think alpaca is that good. I think that you're pretty good. Silver fox is supposed to be at the, maybe maybe like, oh, but the urchin begs to be at the front, man. The urchin begs to be at the front. I think we want it like this. I think this will go hard enough. It doesn't even matter because we're gonna get crushed by snipers on this round anyway. Please tell me we at least draw. Confirm draw, okay. You're gonna see Barbie or Oppenheimer? Listen, I'm bald and pale. I'm not gonna see either of them because we don't have like a babysitter. If I was going, I would like to see both of them. If I was going to see one of them this weekend, it would probably be Oppenheimer. Because I know what it's about and I like predictable stories. I don't know what's going on in Barbie. It doesn't threaten me. It just isn't my pack one, pick one. Plus, science is on my side. Not just because Oppenheimer is a scientist, but also because it has a higher meta score and the higher Rotten Tomatoes firmness rating. As a result, the objectively right choice is to see Oppenheimer. So... It is crazy to me that people keep tweeting insane stuff about Oppenheimer, though. They're like, the only way to see this movie is in IMAX, Dolby Atmos, you know, with subway surfers on the one side of the screen. Bro, it literally took place at a time when everything was black and white. And you want, you want me to roll out the red carpet to see it? It doesn't make any sense. People are saying is the number two Chris Nolan movie right now. Yeah, but like a lot of people saying that have Dunkirk as their number one. That's not my, uh, that's not my tempo. Dunkirk is actually, <laughs> this is not a, a good opinion, but it is true to myself. Dunkirk is my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie I've ever seen. Nobody has short-term memory loss. Nobody travels through time. Uh, nobody gets does a heist five layers of dreams deep. Nobody dons a bat suit or anything like that.
Nobody goes into outer space with a cool robot that looks like this. You know what I mean? I don't like... I, well, I still... I thought Dunkirk was good. But it's not my ideal kind of Chris Nolan. I like the Chris Nolan stuff that he makes for, like, smart 12-year-olds. Anyway, where is I going with this one? <laughs> I don't like the movies that he makes for um, British people who were alive for the Second World War. I like the ones that he makes for people who grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Tenant number one on your list? Nah, man. You gotta be honest. Like, this is not a... Again, this is not a cool guy take in 2023. Number one is The Dark Knight. Now, I'm not, like, that cape shit pilled, especially for DC stuff. So, like, both The Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begin slip down the list. It's not like it goes Dark Knight Begins, Dark Knight Rises. It probably goes, like, Dark Knight... Then for me, it's like Inception. For me, for me, it's Inception. The Prestige, Memento. Interstellar. Dunkirk. Can I say something? Is, 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 uh, wait, I forgot Tenet. Tenet's above Dunkirk for sure, but below Interstellar. Maybe above Interstellar, I don't know. Here's some shit that's gonna fuck with you, okay? Batman Begins is a better movie than The Dark Knight Rises, but I am gonna put The Dark Knight Rises higher on my list because Batman Begins is kind of boring. Movies to watch Subway Surfers in the Corner too. I don't like, you know why? Because for me, half of the Batman movie appeal is the villain. Joker, great villain. Dark Knight Rises, not a great movie. Bane, pretty good villain. Tom Hardy did a, a funny job at the very least. And I don't even, I've seen Batman Begins like three times. He, I don't even know what he does. He's just a guy. He's just a nefarious guy. He's spooky. He's got bad, bad vibes. What about the Scarecrow, though? Yeah, but the Scarecrow's in the movie. He's like the, the red herring. He's like, he's the bad guy. And then afterwards, they're like, no, actually, it's Liam Neeson in a suit, you know, moving money through Swiss bank accounts or something. Like, I'm not want that. I want a dude who's like half crocodile or something like that. <laughs> I want a dude who like can transform into mud or, you know, something like that. I don't want just a guy who's like, I have, I carry a lot of power I project into the world. It's fucking, you're fighting the dude in the bat suit. Be made of clay. Okay? What was I doing here? I'm sorry, I need, I should be playing more sap. Don't get me talking about Christopher Nolan, okay? Don't even get me started. He's econ pilled. What about Matthew Nolan? Is that the Nolan brother who's in prison for like killing somebody? I won. For being a hitman? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Roll me. Have I ever gotten a level three Silver Fox victory? No, maybe. Maybe today's the day. Oh, I don't even think it's like that good, but it's funny. Um, at some point, we're going to want a tiger, but we can like wait around. You know what we need? We need freaking chocolate, man. An ancient man. What if Liam Neeson in The Dark Knight, or sorry, in Batman Begins was made of clay? Well, you don't need me to tell you that that would make the movie better. You got eyes.
Thanks for the money, Lebowski. He literally was, though. He's not, because he would have been forged in the fire at Wayne Manor. Instead, he was killed, except not really. If he was made of clay, then they would have gone back into Wayne Manor and like sifted through the ashes, and there would have been like Liam Neeson's, Neeson's face on like a pot or like a vase or something like that. And you'd be like, you know, Batman would have put like the flowers from his parents' grave in the vase, and that would have faded to black and been the end of the movie. He was literally made of clay. What are you talking? You know what drives it? People are saying this is how it works in the comics. I know you're trolling me, okay? But the video of every clip I see of The Flash is against my will, and it always causes so many questions to rise up in my brain. The, the clip that I saw last night of the hospital falling over and the maternity ward uh, gets tipped and all the babies fall out of the window, okay? So they're falling to their death. And then the Flash is like, I'm going to save them. And uh, he looks at, he's going super speed and he looks at like one of the babies and is about to get like pierced by glass. And then there's another baby that's literally falling into like a, a jet of pure flame. And it, it, like all of the babies are in peril. There's like 10 of them. And then the dude just goes to the vending machine and punches the vending machine and starts eating Twix bars. So many of the replies were like, why is he eating snacks instead of saving the babies? And then, blue check fucking, you know, sorry, sorry, I call it like I see it, was like, in the comics, whenever the Flash enters super speed, he needs, his metabolism also proportionally enters super speed, so he needs to eat a lot of, okay, really, for him to run at the speed of light, he needs to eat eight chocolate bars. Well, that's the way it worked in the comics. So these are movies that real people are going to see. Okay, it's not like a checklist that's like, does this fulfill all of the baseline rubric criteria from the... Like, this is entertainment for mass audiences, man. Because that's what I'm saying. He should have just eaten the babies. <laughs> or one of them, and then the sacrifice of the few for the good of the many. No way he could digest it that fast. His metabolism speeds up proportionally. So apparently, if you run 100 million times faster than the average person, you need to eat 10 times as much food. I don't make the rules. I'm not Jack Kirby. You'd know that if you read The Flash, issue 91 from 1973, where he and Invisible Girl get into uh, hijinks together. Sorry, I thought, I, I thought in the modern era you could just pay $100 for a movie ticket and see like a two-hour movie that stands on its own two legs. Apparently not. You need like so butt-fucked with context from like a hundred years of other media that you had to see in order to understand what's going on at all. Anyway, sorry, I'm playing sad. <laughs> And don't even get me started on the fact that every single shot looks like you're about to take control of your character in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, okay? We, I mean, you just, this is how you bail out. I, I sell you, you buy a crocodile. I sell you, you buy a tiger. Nah. I'm looking for some chocolate, please. Chocolate. Some chocolate, please. Another lioness, you're forcing my hand, Fokker. Sell me. Sauropod piece of crap. Another lioness. Sure, take one of these. I'm, I'm a little upset. No, certainly not happy. You know what? Ice cream makes everything better. Mmm, pineapple's so good. Did you see that Pinky Doll is making $7,000 a day on TikTok Lives? Plus an extra four to five thousand dollars in OnlyFans signups. It's honestly aspirational. Go ahead, take your level. Good for her? That's what I'm saying. Did she pay you for this? No, she's taken over media just by the power of her presence. What is this? 
Holy. <laughs> oh, but then I couldn't. Mm, I see. I see the problem here. Okay, how about this? And then that. Then we'll get a level three next time. Maybe a little parrot. Maybe a little parrot to take you out. What does that mean to play us out? Did you see her talking to her kid and she's French Canadian? She's your people? I don't think I'm French Canadian. I know I have a French Canadian last name. But I was trying to think of like, I, I've never done like an ancestry.com or something like that. Um, but I was thinking about how I could have a French last name but not be French. And I was thinking like, I bet, here's how I think it went down. You gotta go back like, uh, like eight generations there was like a French guy, pure French, all the way down. But then he married someone that was 0% French. They got married. They had a son who's 50% French, 50% something else. Then that son, because he retains the name in our primogenitor male-driven culture, Married another person who is like 0% French. Like, I think the only the name got passed down 100%, but the genes got halved at, at every generation. I don't think I'm French. I think my name is French. I think I'm like 2.5% French. And 97.5% Australian. Do people at the airport talk to you in French because of your last name? All the time. Yes, they do. Hang on, this is an important role. Never mind, it's useless. Um, I don't know about this one. They do always hit me with a, a bonjour followed by a bunch of stuff that I should understand but don't. Um, and then I look at them with a vacant stare and they say oh he's an anglophone and then they say nothing else at all they just usher me through the gate in disdain seat me right next to the lavatory and <laughs> take turns punching me in the face until i pass out well you know what they say it's a living it's my fault for being born english honestly this weekly sucks. Listen you, listen, you. Shut up. It doesn't suck. It's just different. Sure. I, the thing that drives me crazy is people are like, this weekly sucks. You either go early snipers or you go late lionesses. That's every weekly. Okay? You either go, oh, it's, you, by the time you get to Friday, it's either like early team buffalo or it's like, oh, you go snipers, you know, or you go summoning. You know, There's this, this is a good weekly because it's different. I'm not letting you be a hater. You built the same team every time? Yeah, because I've only done two runs because I've been talking about the Flash the whole time. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not Scooty's fault, that's my fault. It is great for badge hunting too. Not that I've been hunting too many badges, but... Because a win is the most important badge to me, personally. No, oh, send them. So true, King. You're all dead. And yet I lived. If you could add an animal based solely on the animal, what would it be? Tough question. I'm going to say dog. No, fuck. Um, elephant. I think, check this out. You, you, you're tired of seeing the same squad every time? <laughs> I was supposed to go on the snake. <laughs> Whoo, sheesh! Uh, sell the parrot, buy an anglerfish. Sell the anglerfish, buy a parrot. Holy, look at that move right there. Now that was, now that was something. 
innovative. Circular gaming? It's not circular gaming. I doubled the stats of the of the parrot. It's the best I've done on a Friday for a long time. Guess who's sap? Sap again? Egg is sap. Tell a friend. So true. Folks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that. Is that a reference to um, John Keats? I'm bald and pale, so I'm not familiar with all this, these so-called rap artists. I think rap is crap, personally. It doesn't take any talent, it's just talking. You know what takes talent is, is singing a tune that'll bend your ear, something like, Camp Town Races, sing this song, do da, do da. Camp Town Races, 10 miles long, all the live long day. Oh, I've never had a level three lioness win? Is such a thing even possible? Says the guy who can't sing. Excuse me, the streets are saying that I can sing now. How about a sizzling gibbon? They are. The streets are saying I can, I can sing. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying it's what the streets are saying. I don't want a blueberry. I do want you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the way. Mandalorian. <laughs> Classic. What street? Sesame Street? There's some good songs on Sesame Street, so I take your joke and I substitute my own. I'm not talking about sunny day, sweeping the clouds away, on my way to where the air is sweet. Won't you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? I'm talking about uh, Billy Porter, Friends with the Penguin. I am certainly not talking about... Um, I mean, if, listen, I know that Common is a very beloved rapper, and I, I got some love for Common's early to mid discography, but he did make the corniest song in Sesame Street history. The one that is um, Belly Breathe. Hang on, I don't know, this might get DMCA'd. Wait, it's on PBS. Your tax is paid for this. I should be able to play it. Belly Breathe Sesame Street song. Eight hundred and twenty-seven views three years ago. Sometimes the monster that's inside you is a monster that is mad. It's a monster who is angry. It's a monster who feels bad. Brother, you wrote I used to love her. Listen to this flow, dude. What happened? When your monster wants to throw things and your monster wants to shout, there's a way to calm your monster and chill your inner monster out. Anyway, you get the idea. Maybe, maybe you don't. We'll make you make a mad monster face. Your mad monster may appear at any time in any place. And that mad monster will make you make a mad monster face. He makes you want to push. He makes you want to shove. There's a way to calm that monster. Bring out the monster love. It's so, like, not... He's just, it's beneath him. As well. I'm not saying being on Sesame Street is beneath a serious artist. I'm just saying he, he needed to bring he needed to bring something a little bit more serious, man. Like that's just He's cracked. What are you he's not cracked? I'm sorry, he's not He's not. I, I wish that it was it was different, but it isn't. 
Oh, man. What do you want him to do? Well, d- dude, you want to... D- while we're here, hang on. Oh, they, you can't make a good song on Sesame Street? Okay. How about Billy Porter, Friends with a Penguin? I saw somebody I didn't know a girl child. Afraid to say hi, I wasn't sure she'd like me then I tried. Hi. Hi. Want to play tag? Are you hearing this? Compared to what, what Common's putting out there? Your mad monster may appear at any time or any place, and that mad monster may make you make a mad monster face. It makes you want to push. It makes you want to shove. There's a way to calm your monster. Bring the monster love. Belly breathe. breathe do, 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 do. You know, like it's just. I don't know if he wrote the song also. Like, I don't know if maybe the Sesame Street writers came to him and said, like, this is the song we got for you. In which case, like, I apologize to Common. I'm just saying, like, it's lower than the level I would expect a Common track to be at. Ooh, pill me. I know this looks like a crazy pill, but I believe it. I believe in it. You need to take the L on that one? The song is horrible, brother. It's so bad that Obama put it on his summer playlist, okay? Let me be clear. <laughs> I am mad. Appeal to authority, technically. It's an inverted appeal to authority, so it's not a fallacy. Chat really be like, F you, you idiot, you suck and you're stupid. And then I'm like, you're mean. And they're like, that's an ad hominem attack. <laughs> Logical fallacy. Okay, I think you do so. I know I'm building the same squad every time. If you got an issue, here's a tissue. I think we can afford this. We're doing great. We got four life remaining. I don't care, I don't care for a swan this week. I just happen to have one. What a shot, brother. What a shot. Out of the presidents, Obama probably has a top 10 taste in music. Brother, there's like four living presidents, for one. Secondly, every president is in office for like four to eight years. But usually, the incumbents tend to win. So as a result, you know, you're talking to literally... 10 presidents at a minimum gives you an 80-year window. Probably, let's just split the difference and say 60 years. Nobody had good taste in music before 1950 that much. Well, okay, listen. If you were in the Mississippi Delta, maybe you had a good taste in music in like 1927. But for the rest, everybody else in the world was just listening to whatever happened to be in the elevator at the time, okay? Good music only started to exist around maybe 1961. So it's not, of course, I, every living president is top 10 taste in music. Joe Biden strikes me as having surprisingly good taste in music for a man of his advanced age. Like, they, like to the point where you would be like, I believe that a publicist made up this list for him. Like I could see Joe Biden name dropping Japanese breakfast and people being like, what? Now, Donald Trump, I don't think he listens to music. I simply can't imagine Donald Trump being in his house and being like, I'm going to put on a song. Maybe it, <laughs> it's happened before. I just can't. I can't picture him being at home and cooking dinner and being like, I want to listen to something while I chop these vegetables. <laughs> Obviously, Obama listens to music. Um, George W. Bush, I bet he has normal taste in music. Bill Clinton loves saxophone music, of course. George H.W. Bush, his favorite song was Belly Breathe by Common, so we don't take that seriously. 
A friend faints. Push the last enemy to the front. Maybe, maybe you give me a second here. You're gone. You're gone. You're here. You're here. You're here. Somebody's getting pilled. Nobody's getting pilled. Somebody's getting pilled. You're getting pilled. Are you getting pilled on the, the dopest stoat I ever smoked? Apparently so. Oh, stoat me! Stoat man! Buys a stoat each time he can sell me! It became level three lioness stone man. <laughs> it's not even how it goes. Oh, it's Friday. It's the first full work week I've had in a while. Oh. What a classic. I don't know. This could be funny. F yeah, keep it going. Everyone loves a song parody that has no punchline, but is funny just because it rhymes, right? My tree frog. If you became president, would your taste in music change? No, I would like to think that absolute power wouldn't corrupt me absolutely. I think I'd just be like the same guy, probably. You, you'd probably change. Me, I think I'd just... I'd stay true to myself, I think. I wouldn't let that such a huge change in circumstance alter my behavior or whatever. You know what? Strong lad there. Strong lad, I gotta hand it to you. Oh, I don't have to hand it to you. Mom said I don't have to hand it to you anymore. All right, you got me. Are we we drew? You gotta get sold. Don't be a lame. You know the game and how it goes. We trying to get so. You know. Listen, I'm gonna. You have my word here. Three wins round nine. We will not go lioness. Okay. Mostly because we have 10 minutes left. We can't afford for this one to go too much longer. So let's, we're going all in right now. You're selling me. We're running a taper at the front. Level three stoat, sell me. Level three crocodile is madness. It's Lin Sanity. You come out here, buy me, sell me. Give me a freaking parrot, you piece of junk. I'm, I'm overpaying for chocolate. Tiger's also kind of cracked. Come out here. Do something. Holy. I won? You gotta get out of here. You gotta get in. You're probably gonna get sniped anyway, but I gotta send you out there. I gotta try something. You spawn you spawn a level two lad on death taper? Level one level two copy? Listen, I don't think it's particularly good, but we're running something a little different this time because I got cyber bullied for being too good. My squad? Your squad? Alright, we won again. Is level two stoat really better than level is level three stoat really better than level two stoat when you consider the only scaling in the pack is lioness? Get in, loser. We're going shopping. I don't know what you're talking about with all your arithmetic and stuff like that. Super auto pets? Twitch TV? What are you talking about? It's the day before Woodstock 99. We're gonna have a fun time and experience a once in a lifetime music festival that is going to uh, unite our generation in a feeling of togetherness, just like it did for our parents. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Can you give me something? I'm... 
You summon a level two Andy. I don't even know what level two I'd like to see, but... Oh, wow! Level three stoat gives higher dopamine. That's damn true. It might be the most true thing that you've ever said. Also, we won again. <laughs> no, we didn't! How did we not... How? How? The taper didn't get a trigger? Team Wood Games? Team Wood Games? Oh, there's no dudes to summon because the rest of the squad was yeeted. So true. You know what? That just means that we need to give you one of these. So true. Nice snipe. <laughs> Oh, what? Hang on. No, nice snipe. <laughs> oh, man. How often do you skibbity in the toilet? You, it's, uh, the question doesn't make sense. You, the skibbity is out of the toilet. That's what's such a problem. That's why cameraman's trying to put the skibbity back in. You don't skibbity in the toilet. It's, it's, it's only a skibbity when there's skibbity out of the toilet. Good shot, kid. Good shot. We're not making it out of this one, that's for sure. Thoughts on the new skibbity toilet app? Never seen it. Never seen it. Quite frankly. I have to wait for somebody to port it to Twitter. What am I supposed to do with this information? I got, I got nothing, man! I should have taken a lioness. I'm so stupid. Thoughts on toilets in general? Top 30 invention in the history of mankind, probably. Did I ever tell you that my friend had a... Uh, a burning hatred for Bill Gates before it became cool, and then also became uncool simultaneously. Bill Gates has got to be one of those guys where if you hate him, you have to make sure you articulate your reasons why. <laughs> you meet somebody and you bond over the fact that you both hate Bill Gates. You're like, wait, because he's taking credit for making self-composting uh, toilets, right? Even though... They don't actually work that well. And they're like, no, nah, brother, because of the microchips. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> or they might be like, I just don't like him because he's rich. And I'd be like, okay, that's, you know, more power to you, I guess. That was why my friend hated him was the toilet thing. This documentary came out that was like, um, Bill Gates was like, I'm saving the world from stinky poops that are disease ridden. And I watched it, and I was, this was like seven or eight years ago. And I was like, this guy is a hero. I was telling my friend about it, and he's, he's a wastewater engineer, and he's like, Bill Gates is a charlatan. The toilets, he makes a big show of going down there and installing the toilets, showing everybody how they work. They don't work. For a fraction of the money, they could just make a manual composting toilet that didn't rely on all this stuff that they... Uh, can't actually, like, make for themselves over there. Like, they just... Anyway. Why does he sound like Trump? I, he's my best friend, President Donald J. Trump. You know why? Because I prime myself with, like, Bill... Sad little Bill. Whether he's making toilets that don't compost or operating systems that are objectively worse than the one be that came before or flying into little St. James at the behest of his mutual friend Jeffrey Epstein... If he came to me and begged on his hands and knees for me to <laughs> provide sanctions on Linux, I would do it. Not bad. Honestly, the impression changes every day. Today's was pretty good, all things considered. <laughs>